Hey YouTube, welcome back to another IEM review. Last time on this channel, we went through the unique melody Mess Mark II, and in that video, I mentioned the V16 Divinity and the Elysian Diva as comparisons. Now given that I've already done a video on the V16 Divinity, I thought it would only be right if I round it up by also making one for the Diva. So here we are, the Elysian Diva 2023. So to give you guys a bit of background on Elysian, they're an IEM company based in Malaysia. Hey, I know Malaysia. I live there. They're an IEM company based in Malaysia. The founder, Mr. Lee himself, runs a one-man show of the entire thing. His IEMs back in 2021 were already regarded as one of the best IEMs in the world, especially for the Annihilator. And now in 2023, he's released new versions of both the Diva and the Annihilator, with an upcoming flagship surpassing the Annihilator sometime next year. Everything used to be handmade by him, which meant orders were almost impossible to get and there was a huge wait time. Now, the Diva is outsourced by a factory in China, so there's already stock available. The Annihilator is still handmade by himself, but in the future, everything should eventually be factory produced so we can all get an Elysian IEM. That allows him to focus on his own research and development. So moving into details, unboxing and features. The Diva comes inside this box, which is an extremely premium yet simplistic feel. Opening the box up, you are greeted with a carry case and the IEMs are underneath. Now, unfortunately, this unboxing experience is a little bit whack, but here we have the IEMs and a carry case. Additionally, on the side, there are pull tabs for the accessories, which includes the cable. In the bottom one, you usually have the air tips, the switch tool, a microfiber cloth, and the whole rest of the lot. The Diva retails for 1600 US dollars, or nearly 2500 Australian dollars for those of us who are here in Australia. It features six VA drivers with an adjustable base level, and the included stock cable here is an Effect Audio Signature Series Aries S. For some reason, the websites for the Diva listed as a Liquid Links Conti, but that is no longer the case. There are three colorways available. Here we have the Obsidian Black, but they also come in Lapis Blue and Ruby Red. Needless to say, the aesthetics are simply beautiful. Please cut this part out, Danny, of me taking the thing out. It's actually like impossible to get this thing out. No. No, I don't think I will. A few moments later. 12 seconds later 20 minutes later 1 hour later 2 hours later Tomorrow Tomorrow for sure Eventually 3 weeks later Many months later. Uh. So much later that the old editor got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Alright, you can start the video around here. Okay. Here's a bit of a closer look at the Elysian Diva in Obsidian Black. Now, unfortunately, my camera is unable to get the proper aesthetics of this in recording, but this thing is amazing, and I'm sure if you guys look up some Google images, you will see it. Now, before we move on to the sonic qualities of this IEM, I do want to criticize two aspects of the design. The first thing is that this IEM does not use your usual two-pin IEM plug but rather it uses what is called a Pentacon Air. Now, I don't think there's anything particularly bad about using P Air, but the problem with this is then for those of us who own other cables, which we use with other IEMs, there isn't really a universal compatibility. And for those of you guys who don't want to use the stock cable, you will have to rebuy another cable. Now, here's a look at what P Air looks like if you want to have a look. So the second thing to talk about here is the base tuning switch. Now, most IEMs these days, which have adjustable tunings, have implemented it as a physical switch on the IEM. Think of the Grand Maestro, for example. The Diva here, however, requires a tool, and you have to spin the component here internally, which just means it's much less convenient for you to switch tunings, and also you have to carry the tool around too if you want to do that. You can't just take the IEM out of your ears, flick a switch, put them back in. Also, the Diva shell is quite big, but I am happy to tell you guys that the fit's amazing regardless. Despite looking very big and being big, 
the ergonomics are actually really well done, so the shell size isn't really a bother. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the sonic aspects. And the first thing I must talk about is general tonality. The Diva is without a doubt, one of the most smooth, non-fatiguing, easy to listen to IEMs of all time. If anything, that's probably the main defining characteristic. The overall signature is pretty much neutral with adjustable bass, but not as much sparkle energy. So starting with bass. Now obviously the Diva here has an adjustable bass switch. However, the overall characteristics of the bass itself doesn't change between them. To put it frankly, the Diva has some of the best BA bass I've ever heard. The sub bass extension goes deep and this thing truly rumbles hard when it's called for. Sometimes it rumbles a bit too much, especially if you listen to it on the max bass switch, which is what I generally do. Mid bass, unfortunately, isn't as good as the sub bass is. So while the mid bass volume can be pretty loud, it can hit, there's still just a little bit of visceral impact that I'm occasionally left wanting. Nonetheless, this will satisfy the vast majority of listeners and the quality is truly excellent. Next thing I need to mention is that the Diva is also nicknamed the Sonstress. And for good reason, mids are the star of the show. The main defining feature of this IM, all vocals just sound as smooth as can be. There's no grain, there's no shoutiness, it's just simple perfection. There's only so much praise I can give it for vocals, and needless to say, it's the same with instrumentals and orchestral pieces. Violins, cellos, viola, and all of those things just sound absolutely fantastic, and the smoothness is unmatched. Tambo also sounds amazing for these. There's just simply nothing particularly negative I can criticize on the Diva in terms of mids. It's easily one of the best IEMs there are. Now, unfortunately, treble is where the Diva falls behind. Now, I don't even particularly like treble, right? I'm not a treble head. But after having listened to IEMs that can do treble well, the Diva's lack of treble becomes quite apparent. Now this somewhat affects resolution, but we can talk about that in terms of text and resolution section. However, the main issue with the Diva's treble is that percussion is poorly rendered. Now a lot of metallic percussion instruments, such as tambourines, cymbals, triangles, or things that have ticking sounds, clicking, clapping, are all quietly left in the background and becomes a bit harder to hear. There's an overall lack of sparkle and shimmer compared to the rest of the performance. Needless to say, this is what helps create that extremely smooth, relaxing, non-fatiguing presentation, but there are often times when I am left wanting more energy. I want a bit more sparkle, a bit more bite. Now in terms of resolution, I think it is important to note that there's a difference between the actual driver capability of the transducer and the perceived resolution coming from tuning. The Diva's resolution is actually extremely good. The drivers are very capable, and Lee has done an amazing job here. However, the tuning itself often masks some of that perceived detail, simply due to the treble recession, and that makes things stand out less. It's a case of, if you went and analyzed the music, and listened for specific things that you know are there, then you'll hear that the resolution is fine, and all of the detail is present. However, if you were to just zone out and immerse yourself in the music, then the sometimes the detail is not as apparent, it's not in your face, and therefore it sounds less detailed. Regardless, there is absolutely nothing to worry about in terms of resolution. Now obviously, it can't compete with the likes of Summit Fire IEMs, such as the Subtonic Storm here, but it's definitely not lacking either. Now regarding the rest of the technicalities, I don't want to repeat the same thing multiple times, so I'll just keep it short. The Diva is good. But that's all it is. Separation, sound staging, speed, dynamics, you name it, the whole lot, is pretty much what you'd expect of a top tier IEM. But that's as much as it gets, and none of these characteristics are particularly stand out. But keep in mind, each IEM has its own special characteristic, and the Divas one lies in terms of tonality, not text. Positional audio is also perfectly acceptable for games, I would recommend toning down the bass switch if you plan on playing FPS, because otherwise the bass does get a bit too much, especially with all the gunshots and things going on. So lastly, for some comparisons, I already talked about the Diva versus the Mess 2 in the Mess 2 video, so we can skip that, and if you're interested, then just go watch the Mess 2 video. However, the V16 I think would be one of the best comparisons to make to the Diva. Now in terms of bass, I will give it to the Diva. The sub bass gets a lot more rumbly and deep, especially with the adjustable tuning switch, and the overall quality is just slightly better. The mids, however, I would rate them as equal. The differences are, the V16 mids are slightly more warm, while the Diva is a bit more neutral. The V16 also has more upper mids, which some might find shouty in some situations, but honestly, I do prefer that little bit of extra energy, especially when it comes to vocals. The Diva in this case would be much smoother and easier to listen to, but then the trade-off is that it's not as engaging sometimes. 
And lastly for treble, I'd also give a slight edge over to the V16, simply because it can render percussion a little bit better. However, neither of these two are particularly good in this area. Mids are their strong suit and their defining characteristic. Lastly, in terms of text, I think the overall resolution is actually equally matched, but it's presented differently. The Diva resolves better for mids, while the V16 gives better perceived detail in terms of percussion and sparkle. With the V16, the boosted mid bass and also upper mids boost often covers a lot of the mids detail. And so it's sometimes harder to hear other sounds within this frequency range. For example, background harmonizing vocals are a lot more apparent on the Diva than the V16. On the flip side, clicking sounds, clapping, ticks, percussion, those things all pop out a little bit more on the V16 than the Diva. You can notice it better, and that gives more of a wow, detail kind of feeling. It's really up to you what you want to listen for more. Sound staging wise, the differences were pretty negligible, and in my opinion, the V16 sounds a little bit wider than the Diva did, but the Diva has a bit more height, and depth was very similar between the two. I'd say the rest of the technicalities are also pretty much the same. In conclusion, I can't praise this IEM enough, and I think everyone should at least demo one of these at some point. I'd like to thank everyone involved for organizing the tour of the Diva and providing me this opportunity to try this amazing IEM. Shout out to Damien and Jordan from Effect Audio. I can't recommend this IEM enough to everyone, and I think it would make a perfect complimentary unit to whatever else you guys have out there. For the times when you guys want to just sit back, relax, enjoy a musical presentation, this is the way to go. You really can't beat this. Peace.